This weekend I'm over in Berlin for Superbooth and I've not had time to make a video so what I thought I would do is upload a video from my Patreon. The video in question is uh, it's one of the first jams I had with a bigger case. I recently got uh, an Arturia Rack Brute 6U so there are two rows of modules. I'm still getting my head around the best way to utilise this extra real estate. But I feel like this jam in this video is particularly good and so yeah the video is quite a long jam and then there's a patch breakdown at the end of the video. Um, so I hope you enjoy and I'll catch you all soon.
So I thought for today's video, I would just have a, a random jam. I spent all the last week making a preset pack for the Hydra synth, which took so much longer than I expected, and ended up reading all of the 80 plus page manual <laughs> just to get my head around the sort of the, the deeper levels of the Hydra synth. And I realised I hadn't actually used a modular in well over a week, which is crazy. That never happens. <laughs> so I set up this um, this rack and had a little jam last night, and this came out uh, really quickly. So let's break down what's going on here. Um, this is a two oscillator rack. I'll start off with the the easiest one, which I guess is the the Instro Croon which I did make a video on for the Patreon a while back. It's a stereo sawtooth based oscillator. Um, it has a great sound. Um, it is going into the Atlas, which has been modulated by maths. From there it's going into the Croon To the Nautilus, to the Mojave, and out to the desk. So it's pretty simple in this patch. It's just playing this sequence. I started off with the filter cut off really low. I was occasionally bringing in some. Nautilus. Whoa. There we go. So just kind of like subtle background swells on the Nautilus. As well as some weird Mojave pitchy stuff. Yeah, that's kind of it for uh, oscillator 1. Oscillator 2 is Platz. Which I actually froze into the data bender to get this sort of background texture. Which is running throughout the entire track. And then I have four different variations of the same sequence on the beat step here that I was just bringing in with a, a lot of reverb from the effects aid and I'm using the oct to modulate I'm in the I think I'm in the FM algorithm and I'm using the oct to modulate the timbre which is what's bringing in that kind of weird sort of percussive sound every cycle of the LFO. So without that, it just sounds like this. And then the second one's like this. That's the third one. And the fourth one. What I was doing was just um, having it muted most of the time and just unmuting it to bring a little bit of that, that kind of sound through. It's got a nice sort of 80s vibe. Also had beads on there sometimes. <laughs> beads with the reverb and the, the modulation of the timbre works really nicely. Or not, I actually have everything clocked here for once. I 
found that there were there was too many <laughs> clock devices. There's like Beads, Data Bender, Nautilus, Mojave, the two sequences, the KO2. It was uh, slightly too much, so I've got Pams going out to everything. Actually, start with a key step, beat step. Oh, this is why I don't like sync. Sometimes it's off. There we go. Finally, the KO2 doing a very basic beat, and I've got some of the um, I sampled the RD8 in here, so I've got the nice 808 percussive sounds. Technical issues. There we go. <laughs> yeah, that's the first Eurac jam I've had in a while. I did miss it weirdly. Any questions, please let me know down below. And yeah, thank you for watching as always.